So the presupposition is that you reaching out, right? So the question is one, how often are you reaching out? Which you really should be reaching out every day. Or if you have specific days of the week that you're reaching out, that's fine too, right? But just have every week you should be reaching out. And then once you're doing that, we know that every time is not gonna in it's not gonna result in them saying, Yes, we want to bring you in, Daryl, right? It's, it's not always gonna result like that. You know, DJ does that a lot with the school, so he know it's not always gonna be on the first time, right? So so then the question is, well, what does the follow-up process look like if they don't say yes? Right? All right. So the very so the first thing to the follow-up, when we first thing we need to do, I want us to always end the call with the date and time. That's number one. Always end with the date and a time. One of the biggest mistakes that I've made um, throughout getting speaking engagements and even following up with clients is I wasn't specific enough when I, when I really first started in this industry. I would say, you know, I, it would be at the end of the call, I'd be like, okay, all right, so, um, you know, I'll give you you know, okay, so you say you'll be available when? All right, cool. Um, next week? All right, I'll give you a call sometime next week. Right? Okay, all right, this is not a good month for you? All right, cool. Listen, I'll call you back sometime in September. Right? And what happens is because there's no specific committed date and time, they forget about it. They forget about you. And one of the biggest and one of the top things, if you ever want somebody to do business with you, you have to be top of mind. Right? You have to be top of mind. If you try, if you show somebody what your value is and they close and they're not quite sure, right? But in the moment, they in it and you try to follow up with them a month later, they ice cold. And if they ice cold, they don't, they, they don't forgot what the conversation was. They don't forgot um, what you talked about. They probably don't forgot you, right? So, the, so you want to make sure that you follow up with a specific date and time because it's likely that they're going to put it in a calendar. And what I would say is send them a Google invite. Send them an invitation, or if you or if you're talking to, you know, if it's if it's more corporate, send them a um, you know, send, send them a um uh, uh you know a, a calendar uh, uh you know Microsoft uh, uh, a calendar invite, right? So like whatever, whatever you need to do to set that specific time of day. So at the end, I would say something like, I would say, um, Okay, all right, you know, I understand. All right, that's that's good. I know you're not you're not really sure. Um, you know, if 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 I if you're if you have any availability to bring me in to speak. Um, and I think that's awesome. So one of the things that um I would love to do is let's follow up. You know, let's let's follow up. Um what what would be a good day with you to follow up so we can continue this conversation? Boom. The second thing is add value along the way. Say it with me. Add value along the way. Add value along the way. Number one thing I don't see people do outside of following up, I you almost never hear people, especially in our industries for coaches and speaking, you almost never hear people give value continuously. You gotta give value, right? So if somebody says, All right, well, um, you know, this is kind of it's kind of it's kind of a busy week. Um, hit me up next week or, hey, let's chat on the 12th or whatever the case is. You don't just want to be ice cold until then because you basically having to start the whole, you have to start the whole conversation over. And Daryl's shaking his head because he knows, right? When you follow it up with somebody, if you got to follow back up, you go start the whole conversation over again, which you don't want to do. What you want to, what you want to be doing is you want to be adding value along the way. That's one of the most, that's one of the reasons why um, and depending on when you came in, you might you might have missed this call, but uh, we should have it in the archive. We have it in the archive somewhere. In regards to this reason, that's one of the reasons you want to have an email list, email newsletter, right? Outside of you just being able to offer products and services that you have with the email newsletter, that is an, an that's another way for you to add value on a continual basis, right? So I actually have actually have two newsletters. I have one newsletter that's just like for basically general population or just general entrepreneurs, business owners. But I also have I also have content that's specifically for, for speaking engagements, right? 
And the reason why it's important that you choose a niche and you're not all over the place is because if you talking to different organizations that's with, that's all over the place, you can't have content that's targeted. You can't have a collection or database of content that you can systematically use for that target audience. If you help them with relationships, if you help them with spirituality, you doing life, you doing motivation, you talking about business. How, and if you targeting all these different organizations and groups and events, how are you? How is that even going to be sustainable for you to be able to follow up with a certain piece of con- with with a strategic set of content? So that's why if you specific to one niche, number three, tres, tres so. Frequency is my friend. Frequency is my friend. So it's good that you add in value, but if you add in value once a month, that's not enough. So we want to dig into adding value. Now we touched on it. We touched on it a little bit and we said we're going to do it weekly, but we want to make sure that one, you following up with the specific date and time, but at the, but at the same time, make sure that you staying consistent and staying frequent with it. If it makes more sense to um, to automate it, you can. You can get, um, we use, well, I use Kajabi real quick for number three in regards to coaching clients, right? So pr- prospective coaching clients. So in regards to what that follow-up process is, typically, if I remember their, their name on Instagram, if I put out a post that I feel like it helped them, I'll typically tag them in a post, right? Because that means that you've gotten on the phone with the prospect and maybe they said they didn't have the money. Maybe they didn't have the time. Maybe, you know, maybe they, they say, oh, I got to talk to my wife or my husband or I got to do whatever. Right. And and, you know, for a fact, and mind you, this is the presupposition, like, you know, for a fact that you can help them. But for whatever reason, you you know, they just weren't ready on the call. What does that follow up process look like? Well, typically what I'm doing is I may tag them on a post on Instagram. Um, if you feel like they worked it, if you feel like that you should do it. Now, I don't always do this with every single person that I, that I talk to on the phone with, but um, it's some people that I do do this too. And then two, you should be able to add them as part of your newsletter, right? So one of the things that um, if you need to learn how to do a newsletter, we did a call on how to do a newsletter. But if you notice, when you sign up, actually, no, you have the option to do that. So let's say if you sign up for um, a call to do a to do a consultation call with me. The fo- anybody remember what the follow up page looks like after you book your appointment? With me? So after you book, I your think appointment- it was no, go ahead, Jabrita. Um, I think it was the questionnaire. Is your qualifying page? Is you qualifying after you do your booking? You're qualifying them to see if they're a fit for your program. So one of the things that I do, so that questions, so I, I ask the questions once they're in the consultation appointment with me. After that page that you book the consultation appointment, what I'll do is the, the following page is a page where they can opt in for, I have a coach and speaker assessment. That coach and speaker assessment, when, once you opt into that, that's that's going to one. You're going to be a part of our newsletter, and two. Now I'm adding value. So if you don't. So if you remember, like you you get you'll get emails from me like ten days straight, and I automated that, right? And so that's all. So we're talking about coaching, talking about speaking. I'm telling you who I am. I'm delivering value. And what that's going to do is that's going to now that's like ten days straight of value that you're getting from me. And a lot of times. At some point in time, through, throughout that, throughout those days, whether it's a week later, whether it's two weeks later, you, I'm still top of mind. And by the time we booked the appointment, you already warmed up to me. You already know me. So, and, and then after that, and you still on my newsletter. So you got a, so you got a sequence that you're going to see from value that you get from me every day for the first ten days. And then after that, you still on my weekly newsletter. And at some point in time, when it comes time to follow up. Because we got a specific day and time that we following up, then you by the time we go on the phone, you already know what I am. You know what I got. You know what I'm about. You know what I. You know what I do. You remember the information. Like you, like you, you still so, you know, you still so excited about it. 
You know what I mean? So that's so that's really the key. So that's that's what that looks like from from an individual coaching perspective. For to get prospects. Okay. Now, number four is this. And I, I don't recommend that you do this for coaching. <laughs> I don't recommend you do this for individuals, but I want you to do this for events. Okay. Number four is show up in person. Show up in person. And you're going to go actually go to what the venue is. If they have another event prior to the event that you want to speak at, you're going to go to it. If they have any kind of outing, any kind of function, if it's a group, if it's a meetup, I want you to show up in person. Even if you got to pay some money, show up. Because once you show up, one, you know, they see you there supporting, but two, you're going to meet the event planner there. Mm-hmm.